hello friends, and also, hello enemies. So, as it has been established, I am not that big of an X-Men fan. I know of them. I have a few characters I like. Nightcrawler is the best. I watched X-Men Evolution back in the day. I read the Deadpool and Cable comics. I read the X-Force comics, but that's about the extent of my X-Men journey. Patrick, however, is a big X-Men fan, and so whenever there's an X-Men toy, he is on the scene. So we've been sitting on this Phoenix figure from Moffex for a little bit. We thought that it would be fun to do a comparison with the uh, Marvel Legends Phoenix that we knew was coming out, and so we waited for this one to arrive, and now she's here. And now we will look at them both. It's Phoenix versus Phoenix in a battle royale. Who will come out on top? I guess a battle royale has more than two people. But if Phoenix is a separate entity inside Jean Grey, that would mean that this is four people, right? So obviously this Marvel Legends one is unique in that you also get a stand. It's kind of hidden by the glare, but of course we'll get a better look at that in a moment. This set will be about $50 or so, depending on where you get it from. And then Moffex figures, of course, are typically of a higher quality. They're imports, higher quality plastic, better paint and articulation. So this figure, depending on where you get it from, can range anywhere from $70 to $100. Typically, if you import them straight from Japan, they're cheaper, but then you have to uh, pay for extra shipping. So in some cases, it evens out a little bit. In this case, even though there is less in the box, this one is markedly uh, more expensive. And as with most Moffex figures, I assume that the price is going to reflect that, but let's see. Let's look at the, um, the boxes first. Nice and colorful, like a comic book with the halftone background. You've got a mix of product shots and illustrations of Jean Grey slash Phoenix. Some more product shots on the back. X-Man. All in all, a fairly simple box. I used to watch X-Men Evolution back in the day, and Jean was one of my <laughs> least favorite characters. Just like the point of Jean and Scott in that show were to be like the stick in the mud. They were like the adult figures. They were just kind of lame. So this is the Marvel Legends Phoenix. Big window to show her and all her accessories and that Phoenix base. Beautiful illustration. This on the back I believe is a render. Thicker box material for this one but it has to hold up that extra Phoenix weight so that's not a surprise. So I've got my lucky rusty razor blade. It gets rustier with every day that passes and we will go ahead and open these up. Dare to compare. Alright, first things first. Let me just say that it is a good thing that both of these come with stands because they are not prone to want to uh, stand up on their own. That's why this one is in such an awkward pose. It just took a while to actually get her to stand. She in particular is very top heavy and her feet are very small. They have that added toe joint, which is cool for articulation, but it adds a lot of instability to the foot. This one's a little bit better, but not by much. As you can see, Mafex runs. Mafex? Moffex? I say Moffex. I'm just going to keep doing that until someone corrects me. Anyway, these figures run a little bit smaller than what you'd expect from Marvel Legends Hasbro figures. So this is my initial look at these. I haven't really gotten a good look at either yet, but so far they both, they both look great. I'm preferring this one so far. The gold on that outfit is just stunning. It's beautiful. And I love her, her face sculpt. This one, the one on the Marvel Legends, is good too. It just looks a little much. I know she's supposed to be like a chaotic space force or whatever, but the expression's a little bit intense and the makeup is a little crazy. Accurate, I'm sure, so I don't have a problem with it. I just kind of like, um, I like this sculpt more on the Moffex. I like the paint more. Her skin is a little bit more natural in this. Here it's kind of a, a pinky hue, and the hair on the Moffex one is so much better sculpted and and colored. Uh, it's mainly the paint on the hair that's doing it for me. Like the sculpt on this one isn't bad, but they just like washed it with black and that's supposed to give you shadow, but here it just makes her hair look dirty. Which I mean, if you're a cosmic space entity, are you going to take showers? 
I don't think so. And it's also just that the uh, the sculpt on the Marvel Legends hair is less crisp. You don't get those uh, sharp edges like you get on this one. I mean, this is a comparison video. I don't want to drag one figure over the other because I think they both look good so far, but I mean, there is going to be one that comes out on top. Very different uh, proportion-wise. The Marvel Legends one is built a little bit more like the classic female superhero. Model proportions, a small but very elongated waist, big hips, big boobs. Not to say that this one isn't built to certain standards. She also has a large chest and large hips. And uh, if you can tell, if you move that sash down, she also has a tiny, tiny, tiny waist. It's not as elongated as this one, which gives her more of a naturalistic appearance, but when you pay closer attention, not really. <laughs> Regardless of what some of you may think, this isn't a channel where I just go through female action figures and talk about how they're unrealistic, but I do, I mean, I feel like I have to comment on that whenever I see it. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. These two aren't particularly sexualized, and I mean, it's how they appear in the comics. I understand when you're, when you're trying to make a certain archetype character, there's there's character design rules you follow. But I think I prefer the proportions on this one just because, I don't know, uh, the sash hides that tiny waist a little bit and just makes her look a little bit more believable. That said, I like the body sculpt on both of these. They are both good in different ways. I especially like her abs. Her abs are visible through the costume in both of these instances. And this surprised me. So usually for Marvel Legends in the butt region, the rest of the costume can be skin tight, but they'll have no definition in the butt and just like little lines of fabric where the, the costume's kind of loose over the butt. Like maybe they got my my notes. But yeah, this is appropriately tight, just like the rest of her costume. She does have a little bit of um, wrinklage in the armpit area. That to me is an interesting choice because there's no wrinkles anywhere else on the costume. It's almost as if they were like <laughs> wanting these wrinkles to be there specifically so it looks like her boobs are popping out. <laughs> I, surely that's not it. I don't, I don't believe that's it. I think that someone just thought that it would look natural to place wrinkles there. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. No wrinkles on this costume, which I, well, I was about to say there's no wrinkles on this costume, but there's a little bit of a wrinkle in this, uh, this thigh area, and it's not too accentuated, so it's, it's subtle. It looks good. Another thing about the Moffix one is that there are orange highlights in her red hair. Makes it look even more fiery, which was a cool decision. Let's look at the Phoenix emblem, then I'll get to articulation and everything. So we ordered two of these. Each one had this black dot in the center, but this one uh, seems relatively clean. The thing about this one, though, is that the Phoenix extends to her torso, so it might look strange when you begin to pose her, whereas this one is on one piece of the body. Sash is sculpted really nicely. In both cases, they've both got little miniature phoenix emblems. And of course we'll look at accessories, but I want to go through articulation first. I know what to expect with both of these, because I've opened up Marvel Legends, several Marvel Legends, and Moffex figures before. The hair is going to be an issue, I feel. Just, she's got so much of it. She's got a butterfly joint, which is nice. Good for some backward shoulder movement. Arm up. You've got a uh, bicep swivel. Double elbow. Of course, you've got swivel on the wrist, up and down. Good movement on that torso piece. She has also got a crunch right here. And that's cool because it is well hidden by that sash. Leg up to the side. Not so much back. She runs into that same problem that many Marvel Legends have, and that is the butt is in the way. Thigh swivel. Unnecessary, if you ask me double knee rock and hinge on the ankle. So yep, that's about what you'd expect from the newer Marvel Legends figures. Now let's look at the Muffex. It's a pricier uh, piece of plastic, so I'm, I'm less confident about moving it around with such gusto, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful with this one. Her neck's a little bit wet because I had to um, get this head hot to pop it on. She's got a little bit more range of motion because her neck joint is shaped differently. If you take off her head, you'll see that the neck joint, or the neck peg, is kind of hooked forward. So it gives her a little bit a better range of motion, even with that hair. She's also got the neck joint, which is great. I love a good neck joint. She too has a butterfly joint. It seems to have more range of motion than the uh, Marvel 
legend one. Up on that arm, another bicep swivel, double elbow, and that one is a little bit better hidden swivel, and up and down on the hand. You can get a bit of twist on this torso joint, but mainly it is for up and down movement. You also have a bit of crunch down near the uh, hip region, some rocking back and forth there. Leg up, to the side. Wow, she can kick a lot higher than the other one. Uh, she can't really go straight back because she too runs into the butt problem, but she can, she can do kind of a side back kick. Double knee, again, very smooth, good looking joint, ball joint on that ankle. And a little toe joint. It's my experience that Malfax figures are very smooth. They move very nicely, the joints are all smooth, the plastic feels great. I mean, it's an expensive, it's an expensive figure, so I mean, uh, you should expect that. All right, now let's look at accessories. Uh, and you can see one big accessory is missing. The base for her is off to the side. We will look at that separately in a moment. So for the Marvel Legends, you get one head, a very, very angry Phoenix Force head. It looks almost gruesome. She's got red in her eyes. She's got a sneer on her face. She looks a bit like a witch. So that's very cool. I love the expression on this face. I love the paint. I love that sneer, pure pure rage. The hair is going every which way. The hair sculpt on this head I feel is better for sure. The paint is better. It's still a little dirty looking in some places, but it doesn't have like splotches of black like on the other figure, like on the other head. So that is a very cool, very cool head sculpt. And in addition to those meh, magic using hands that she has that I hate, she's got two fists. Pew, pew. On paper, this one comes with more accessories, but she does not come with that, um, that big phoenix base. She does, however, come with a, uh, a regular, like, clear stand base. It's got a lot of options for attachments. So, even though she is bad at standing up on her own, you won't have to. You'll have a base. So she will come with two extra heads. She also has a phoenix force head. Not quite as intense as the Marvel Legends head. There's not much of an emotion on her face. Her lips are pursed a little bit, which is an interesting choice. She looks more like disapproving than like a <laughs> an angry chaos god. The hair sculpt is once again very beautiful. A lot of swirls. Just love the way that makes it look like fire. Very nice. And then you've got this head. Um, I'm sure that this is based on an artist. And I know I say this frequently. I majored in sequential art comic books. That is my major. That's what I went to school for. I am so... <laughs> I don't remember anything. I remember how to make a comic. I don't remember the names of artists or authors. I just... I couldn't tell you whose art this is based on. But it has to be based on art because it's very... Um, it's a very specific look. It's not a good look, IMO. I don't like the curly hair. It's very nicely sculpted, but I don't like it. <laughs> and the face, uh, the sculpt isn't great. Unless they're trying to replicate a specific artist's style and a specific expression that that artist drew, in which case it's a great sculpt. It's just that the mouth looks weirdly tiny. It looks weirdly tiny. She's opening her mouth, but her chin is still really big. I, <laughs> it just looks wrong. It doesn't look accurate. These two heads are much better IMO. You get another sash that's uh, waving in the wind. And then you get three extra sets of hands. Splayed palms. Fists. And kind of like a force, force hand. Which is still, I think, in the realm of magic using hand. But it's way better than this thing that the Marvel Legends figures always do. I, I hate that. Every time it crops up in a review, I will rant about it. And I'm sorry if you're tired of hearing that rant, but I'm tired of this hand. So let's put her aside and let's look at this Phoenix base. All right, let's look at this Phoenix base. It's pretty big, so it's, it's a little bit difficult to fit it all in frame. And I'd be surprised if the detail is coming through on the camera. I hope it is, because it is very detailed and it's very beautiful. This stand in a lot of ways is the star of the set. It looks like a bird made of fire. I don't know what to tell you. Another cool thing is that the head is articulated. 
So you can have it straight on, you can have it to the side, whatever you think looks better. There's the back. So this stand will come in two pieces and you have to squish those together and then insert this bird in a certain way. There's grooves in the back for the tail. So it slips between this little back flame and these front flames. You kind of have to move these front flames a little bit to allow for it to slip in between. So we got these little tea lights from um, Daiso, which if you don't know is a Japanese dollar store. They have a lot of really cool stuff. Patrick had a theory that if you take out this bottom part and put one of these little tea lights underneath, here's what the tea light is supposed to look like, but we took the top off. Turn that on and kind of place it underneath there. You can't see it now, but let's turn off the lights. It creates a really cool effect. You can't see it with all my lights on because I've got a bunch of lights just blaring in the space, but in normal lighting conditions you can see a little flicker. And of course when the lights are off you get this, which looks amazing. It doesn't extend to the bird, but the flames are beautiful. So that is just uh, something to consider if you want to kind of up your display. These tea lights fit really nicely under the space. All you have to do is pop the little top off, and the stand doesn't need that bottom part to stay together. So. That's an optional part. Sorry for moving the uh, the camera around so much. My setup, um, well, first of all, you guys know that I have short arms. I'm a, I'm a short person. I've got short arms. But when I have to move the camera away from a bigger piece like this to get more of it in the frame, I have to move it away from the table and it it's very easy for me to wobble it. I try not to, but my short arms can only do so much. So there's a little hole in here where her foot can go. Actually first let's put on her scary head. Can't deny that looks pretty cool. I do wish that she was either a little smaller or the phoenix was a little bigger but I mean I can't I can't complain. That looks awesome. I think it would look even better with the phoenix head to the side because then you get more of a profile. Yes. <coughs> That's canonically what a phoenix sounds like. Let's um replace her with this jean. See how that looks. One jean out one jean in. Her foot just sinks all the way into that hole. <laughs> but I think her small size really works better in the stand. It just makes the phoenix look that much bigger. So really I'd prefer this jean and this base. Though that face, it's just so neutral when compared to this face. They both look great, but this one is so nasty looking. Like she is ready to just like rip someone apart. Rip someone's skeleton right through their right through their mouth. So just as a quick addition, we also have this uh, comics version of Jean Grey, also from Moffex. We've had her for a while, but I never reviewed her. Again, a very solid sculpt, beautiful hair, beautiful face. She looks, uh, she looks motherly. She looks like, um, she's about to sternly tell me that I don't need a cookie before dinner. But of course, again, great quality on this one. The blue, uh, the metallic blue on her outfit, so pretty. Man, Moffex just kills it with the metallics. Once again, a lot of articulation on her, even with that hair, that neck joint, just does a lot of heavy lifting. She's got pretty much the same articulation. I'd be surprised if there's anything different at all. Yep, just a surprise little uh, mini review for this comics version Jean Grey from Muffix. So we also brought out this Warbird figure because she runs a little bit smaller than other Marvel Legends. Some parts might be reused, but it is not reused throughout the whole thing. And this Phoenix figure is uh, also running a little bit small. She kind of um, stacks up pretty well next to Warbird, except Warbird's face is very small in comparison. She's got a small head. But yeah, even though Mafex is a little bit smaller, uh, it looks fine next to these figures. Next up, we've got another Marvel Legend. This is the Uncanny X-Men Phoenix, and she is looking pretty rough. Her hair is even more dirty. And lastly, I just want to show them against this Mezco Cyclops. So Mezco proportions tend to skew a little bit more realistic, but they still don't look bad together. Jean just looks very, very skinny, which the figure is very, very skinny, so. Okay, in my opinion, this is the better figure, but this one isn't bad at all, especially when you get this base. You get this base and the figure and uh, the other accessories for 50-ish 50, 50 dollars. That is not bad. That standalone is 
worth it, but this Phoenix does come with a lot of accessories, two extra heads, an extra sash, a lot of extra hands. She does come with that clear stand that I showed you. Not as grand as the Phoenix stand, but still good. Good for keeping her stable, good for flying poses. Yeah, just Moffix is higher quality plastic, uh, smoother joints, more fun to play around with than Marvel Legends, but I, I do treat them a little bit more tenderly because they are so expensive. And yeah, the Marvel Legends one is not bad at all. I mean, if you didn't have this one to compare it against, I mean, there'd be basically no complaints except for that her hair is a little bit dirty. And I do love this face sculpt. She just looks mean. And aside from like monstrous characters, witch characters, even then, you don't really see a female action figure head sculpt that looks so nasty, that just looks demon possessed. I mean, that sneer really does it for me. So my favorite is this one, but they both, they both have very, very good qualities. And again, that stand is beautiful. So as always, likes and subscribes are very much appreciated. Comments, of course, are always welcome. I will get to them eventually. And I'll see you guys on the next one.